the button. And it says we're live. It's amazing how that works. You hit the button and then you go live. It, it works like that every Second time. Hello later. and welcome to episode 191. We are fastly approaching 200 episodes of this nonsense that we call This Week in Gear Report, <laughs> the show where we sometimes talk about what's been published since the last episode, what's going to be published soon. And then we have a, a segment that we like to call TJ's Happy Hour. It's named after that guy over there. That's me. He says he's the former director of Snacks and Beverages. We've had an ongoing oh. issue trying to figure out what title TJ has. And he keeps doing things that I'm like, oh, okay, you're demoted. But you gave, you gave me power. It's your fault. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to see. Oh, isn't that interesting? It looks like we got a couple notices that. Uh, I saw that. Instagram and was it Twitch maybe that didn't take? No, maybe that's mm -hmm. Twitch. Maybe it's something else. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the <laughs> rumble one. They're not very well labeled. I got to remember to do better at that next time. Remove this destination. You know what? I'm just going to cancel that and leave that sitting there. All right. A little housekeeping that was unplanned yeah. there. So, um, all right, well, we've got a really interesting show. I've been very excited about this one for a while uh, at the Iraq Veteran 8888 Range Day, which, you know, we've been to a whole bunch of those. And uh, and I tried to avoid someone there for like the whole time. And it was actually when we were packing up about to leave that I overheard someone else having a discussion. And, oh, you know, it was um, it was Chad. You know, Eric and Chad from Iraq Veteran 8088. I was doing a little bit of video and Chad comes up and he starts talking to this dude. And um, and I, I was unfamiliar. Right. But I saw the 3D printer in front of me and a bunch of 3D printed guns. And I was like, I got to avoid this because this rabbit hole that I don't have time to go down. I get too obsessive. And I have been, I've wanted a 3D printer for like a decade and I've never done it because I know I'm gonna, just going to dive in and be too overboard with it. Um, but after that discussion, um, I'll actually show some pictures later, maybe some video of the 3D printer that I just set up in the office last Friday, so almost a week ago. And uh, we'll talk about some of the projects we're doing and the new channel that we created. We can probably talk about that real quick as well. Actually, you know what? Um, I, I was about to say, you know, we should bring some of the other people in here. Komar is is in transit, so we're going to um, leave him here so he can pipe in and say stuff when he wants to, but not harass him. Uh, that guy over there is TJ. This guy that I'm about to put on the screen, people call him Crashing Rich. I find that a little bit insulting. I call him Flying Rich. That's what his name says, right? Thank you, sir. Oh, plane yes. Crash Expert. Never mind. Yeah. Maybe I was incorrect yeah. there. All right. Yeah. Rich, thanks for being here. Oh, we really appreciate you. Text. It does, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Komar and Rich both have some experience in 3D printing. And I, I oh, wanted them to be here. I was sure. hoping Chris could be here as well. Chris is part of the Gear Report um, the Gear Report team. He's been on the Gear Report Firearms team since almost the very beginning. He's one of the very first firearms authors that we've had here. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a sticker that looks like that. A fly and rich mm -hmm. sticker. Um, so uh, Chris, Chris couldn't make it. He's a scout leader. That, that's because like you didn't make it to shot show that one year. And I just gave the patch to TJ. Oh yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> mm. It was several years ago, but that wound is still a little too raw, rich. It's still this too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Still too soon, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do on this program is uh, uh, Middleton Maid is going to be here. I, I believe. Oh, his cool. name is Ethan, and he will be here shortly. He was here in the green room, and he wanted to get a new a new camera. It just arrived. He hadn't had time to set it up. He said, "I really want to use a good camera." I said, "You know what? We'll kill some time." Doesn't he know it's Gear Report? Yeah. Was, we weren't going to yeah, say anything. Exactly. I'm like, not everyone knows like, how we just, work. Just my laptop we're, camera. I'm like. Dude, mine's mine's like oh, oh dude, th this is last gen cell phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so what we'll talk about real quick. Um, let's see, and I'm just keeping an eye on messages. You know, it's a fun thing. You ever, um, you ever post stuff for sale on Facebook, and it's like no one messages you, and the What's next Facebook? thing you know, it blows up, and like everyone wants to talk to you about stuff. 
So um, I can tell you right yeah. now, probably not a damn one of them wants to buy anything. They just no. want my phone number so they can run some sort of scam on me. No, no, I've seen you touch firearms on a stream. Um, yeah, and we don't do that anymore because. Oh. Um, are you aware? You see the wall of guitars behind me. Are you aware? The wall of guitars. The Guitar Gear Report <laughs> channel was nuked by YouTube. Like we have a firearms channel that we're broadcasting on now. We have the the OG guitars. Gear Report Reviews channel that we've done lots of gun stuff on. We've handled uh, pew pews live before with with you know copious disclaimers about these are empty. There's no ammo around. It couldn't be fired if it wanted to, and we haven't had any issues yet. But then the guitar channel got nuked for a claim that we were talking about counterfeit stuff, which. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Maybe, we were talking maybe, maybe about not. that. Yeah. Um, oh, terrible experience. The, this the, Trying to deal with YouTube uh, and get any information whatsoever, it never happened. They just no, that, no, that's, that's a train wreck. Never even, sent us a, never even sent an email to say, here's why. Um, no help whatsoever. Uh, so I'm a little sensitive to that and uh, a little scared to um, to get this channel nuked, which is why when Ethan comes in to talk about uh, what he does with uh, 3D printing of firearms, he's going to cover what the rules are about what we can and can't talk about to keep things from getting nuked, right? <laughs> like, like because we, we talked about this in the green room before he, he dropped off to get his camera first. set up. And he, he's going to help us okay. stay so that we don't oh, get in trouble. Oh, um, can I show just the tip? We're we're gonna dive into that, to Rich. Don't don't get us nuked, man. I've had one a different channel. Already. You can, yeah. So um, I think he's almost ready to come back in. I'm gonna show you guys right bef before, just to be sure he's fully set up. I'm gonna show you what I just set up here in the office. Let me put. There it is. I'll put us on the screen here. Ooh, fancy. And, uh, so you, you, let me move us back. You didn't side. take my advice, is what that looks like. I didn't. Like. I didn't. And and I'll tell you why is that because all the research I did about the data that Bamboo Lab shares, everything you touch goes through their cloud servers, and I don't like yeah. that. I have yeah. Huge you don't have to do it that way. I mean, you can, but you don't. Uh, well, to get the real benefit of of how they work, I think you pretty much do. But I'm combining yeah. the new Gear Report Maker channel that just launched a couple days ago is going to cover the laser engraving, so, 3D printing, and woodworking, and metalworking, and all that kind of stuff. What filament are you printing that in? That's that's just PLA, and that's the the non structural, you know, really light stuff on the outside. Now, this intersection is probably going to be PLA two with a, a much more dense infill. And so on a on an electrical uh, on an electric guitar, I guess how what you make it out of isn't that important. It is for the center section because it's going to have about yeah. uh, I I saw where who was I think it was Joseph Prusa that uh, when he did the Prusa caster he did a video and a big article that, and he said it was about I want to say 50, 50 of some unit of pulling force I don't remember what unit he used whether it was yeah, a I, I guess European unit or a, a U.S. unit but yeah. but it's going to have some significant freedom units or it. that other shit and he um he he experimented and came up with a recipe that worked using PLA. I think it was about 50% infill with seven walls. And uh, hopefully that will be sufficient, but we're going to play around with it. So Chris is, Chris is printing the Prusa caster and I'm printing a different one. And, um, and like what's on the screen, I have been 3d printing for less than a week. And, um, and, and I've already got that. That's going to be done in a that, day or two, hopefully. That's because so, you stand on the shoulders of greatness. Well, I attempt to. I attempt to. Yeah. So I've killed enough time. That's. I wanted to get some of that stuff out of the way so we wouldn't distract from the discussion. Uh, welcome, middle to maid, to this week of gear report. It's a pleasure to have you. I've been so looking forward to this discussion. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, yeah. and all I got to say is he's been avoiding me and I told him I will find you and I will get you. And hence, here I am. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. It's good seeing you, Rich. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you too, man. <laughs> yeah. So Rich did it. Rich did the thing, you know, that we do here. Um, what I don't understand why, but sometimes when people come on this program or come in the comments, the traditional re- greeting is three yos. And we capitalize the Y's and the O's are lowercase. I don't understand it. We've been doing it for years at this point. I don't even yeah. know why, but we you, you'll out. see some other people. If they show up, they'll, they'll say things. Maybe they get it right. Maybe they don't. But anyhow, see, my that, main that, comment is that you have enough guitars. Why aren't you printing a bass yet? Um, I, w- well, okay. So <laughs> get it. Don't get it. It is down. something that may happen. But a bass with a longer neck and heavier strings has got to support more tension. And I'm okay, trying to lying. like crawl before I walk here. That's fair. That's fair. So you you may have noticed when I had that on this the picture on the screen, instead of printing an entire guitar body in one go, which will actually fit on the bed of this printer. I got like the it's what is it, 420 by 420. By 480. It's huge. Oh, is that a joke? 420 by 420. Is that really? They went there. They did. Yeah, it's big. And and a, a Telecaster body will fit on there, complete with a little room to spare. But I know my luck is everything's going to print good till I go for the big one that takes a long time, and then it'll screw up. So I'm trying to learn things. With, uh, then with you're going to have a power edge. Yeah. You got a UPS on that thing or what? No. No, I don't have a FedEx. I don't have a DHL. <laughs> I don't have a China post. I got nothing. It's just plugged into a power strip. So that's part of the reason you guys are here. You got to, you got to educate yeah. me and the audience. He's a novice. So let's kind of step back and talk well, about what, what the I, purpose is. I mean, you've is. already done everything wrong. You didn't buy, you know, a, <laughs> a, a, uh, you didn't listen a to the first place. P1P. I know. I know. I'm obstinate. <laughs> it, 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 it's so funny. I gave Jeff like the talk. The benefit of my years of knowledge of 3D printing. And I said, you know, I was buying these enders for like $100, $200, mm-hmm. adding a Raspberry Pi, a webcam, um, you know, all of this extra add on stuff to do everything a bamboo did out of the mm-hmm. box and perfect and better than if I tuned the fuck out of my ender. It did it better, faster, and sent all my prints to China. So they have a copy of every dildo I ever printed. Yeah. That's the um, downside of that. And that's a lot of data. Only, yeah. You know, they're big, they're black. And <laughs> yeah. Some are 556 five, and some are 300 blackout. All right. Give the disclaimer to help us keep from getting new. All right. Which Raspberry Pi did you say I need to buy? It doesn't matter. You don't even have to buy a Raspberry Pi. I know. You could, buy an orange pie, you could buy an orange pie. So the disclaimer I was talking about, anytime you pick that stuff up, that was not a functional firearm. That was a, that was parts. parts. It, it's that not something that could be fired. Absolutely parts. Yeah. Yeah, because we have a very anti-get-the-channel-nuke stance here, especially after losing the guitar <laughs> channel recently. <laughs> you know, I just keep making new ones. just... Because you did a bad Jimi Hendrix rift, and they didn't like oh, it. Well, <laughs> I aspire like, to quality. be able to do a You're bad You're culturally Hendrix appropriating rift. Jimi Hendrix. So the goal of the program this evening is, is a couple fold. One is I want to learn more about 3D printing stuff. And I think the audience will, will appreciate that because we've got a variety of different uses we're going to explore. Um, I, like I'm a scout leader, and I work with the Sea Scouts. we got a bunch of sailboats, and we've got a bunch of little mm-hmm. parts that are crazy expensive you know mm. uh little things that go on the sale and there are 30 or 35 of them on each sale and they're 15 uh, bucks a piece and i'm like oh, oh the little plastic things that like i'm going to be able to print that kind of stuff and save them a ton of money so mm-hmm. there are little just, things like that just remember really water and uv are two of the world's greatest solvents sure yeah so, so I don't, I don't know a whole lot about filament that's resistant to UV. I've been printing the F out of carbon fiber nylon. Right. Um, it may be UV, yeah. UV and resistant. I don't know. And, and maybe that's what I need to do is look into other stuff like that. But, but so we're going to explore some practical things like that. 
I, I'm not really into printing little figurines and helmets and cosplay stuff. Uh-oh. I have a cosplayer in my house. What, step back. What's that shirt say? Yours? <laughs> not You're mine. to see if I can read, right? No, no, I'm not not asking what my shirt says. What, Middleton made, what's, what's that say? Kill your local pedophile. Huh. I think that's a good <laughs> message. Do I have to pay to join that group? I mean, what do I need to do? It's a clandestine operation. It's okay. a club that There's we never that. really meet together. It's just oh. uh so don't talk about Fight hard. Club. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Oh, Crystal's out there. Yep. Justin. Yo, yo, yo. See, getting it right pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost close. They're close. Yeah. We're gonna skip the football comment down there. Uh yeah, but little- anyhow, that's one of the goals for 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 us on the channel on how we want to cover 3D printing is practical uses. And then um I do want to get into making gun stuff. We had um, what stuff? What gun stuff? Pew pew. Yeah. Where my lot, New my York ban that? In, New York banned that, right? I I don't know. I'm not in New York, so it doesn't matter <laughs> to me what they do. Oh, they, like, they banned internet, the anarchist cookbook, all of that stuff. Yeah. Right? Wow. That's See, I wasn't aware of that. But but personally, I want to do some of that. And, um, and the guitar stuff, like I, I, we relaunched that we already had the guitar channel over on rumble and odyssey, and we're just shifting all the content there. And I figured a good project to learn how 3d printing works would be to make those guitars because I can make all the mistakes mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. want on something that's not going to blow up on me. And, uh, you know, maybe I, learn I how to learn anything else and uh, give it time, rich. I have faith in you. Uh, So that's part of what I'm looking to do on gear report. But, um, uh, but I saw so many cool things on the table. And and honestly, I I never asked you there at the Iraq veteran event, what stuff was yours? What stuff was Hoffman? What, where the intersection of you guys was, but, but I was so, so that's a a little bit about my interest and why I'm getting into this. But I want to hear. Mm-hmm. I want to hear from you. Like, what what's your channel all about, and your website, and you know the full scope of you know the history of how how'd you get into this, and where do you see it going, and you know uh, what excites you, all that stuff. I mean, we we do have kind of a kid friendly show, so we need to yeah, that's a loaded question right there. Buddy. Frame that question a little bit, but uh, but yeah. <laughs> so why don't we start with an introduction? Everyone what's... knows the rest of us because we're on here all the time. But uh, tell us about yourself. <laughs> So I'm Ethan. I am the the guy behind Middleton Made. Uh, if you've ever heard of any of the 3D printed firearm designs that have food names, it's probably me. The most prolific one being the Mac and Cheese. I'm from Wisconsin. We love cheese. It's a Mac 11 platform, so you got the 9mm Mac 11 cheese, Mac and Cheese. Um, yeah, so this is the website. Um, recently updated it, so I uh, put a lot of work into that. <laughs> Um, yeah, but you can see, awesome. I mean, right there, there's a rendering of a uh, Glock 19. Uh, that's the schnitzel, mm-hmm. uh, based on an Austrian <laughs> recipe. Names um, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I got into 3D printing because I, at this one time, just moved across the country and I was absolutely broke, but I needed to put some sort of optic on this AR that I got a really good deal on. Uh, and I didn't have a riser for this little RMR I had, and it was just on a low mount. So I'm like, man, I can buy a riser. Those ones are like 80 bucks. Or I could teach myself how to do CAD and maybe even oh. like print one. I bet you could print one. This Cody Wilson guy, he printed a whole gun in a shot. So Cody who? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it all started from there, and I... Uh, Purchased an Anet A8 for $120 direct from. Oh China. no way! High yeah, five, was, man. Yeah, that was my first uh, fire hazard, <laughs> and um, taught myself how to use uh, SolidWorks with the help of a uh, friend who is in the aerospace game and or still is. But um, he gave me a couple pointers enough to get my feet wet and said, "Good luck." So. Other than like, here's the very basics of how to do a sketch and what this program does. I am self-taught. So it's pretty cool to be able to go from, you know, it'd be really cool to save money on stuff to being like, I'm spending way too much money on this stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So how long did it take you to build the A-Net? Uh, not very long. Maybe hour. 
Oh, and no. Whoa, whoa. 8 at 8 in an hour? Yeah. I just I'm taking totally the. Cold. Well, here's the. Here, I didn't peel off all the stuff. The shiny black, no, that wasn't cutting it for me. So I left all of the covering on the acrylic. It was nice and brown, a matte finish, no shiny reflections. So you can probably take another 25 minutes off of the time for uh, if someone is going to peel all that stuff off because oh, dude, that, that is that so took tedious. me an easy five hours to build. No, that, way. that was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm good at this shit. <laughs> it's just a handful of bolts and screws. A hundred? <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, all right. So I got to tell you, the ANET A8, and, and uh, we're, so we'll sidetrack here a little bit. Because you build every portion of the A net, other than mm -hmm. soldering chips on the board, there's you know everything about that machine. Yes, I had do. like something go bad on the hot end on my uh, Ender three, and I'm like, I don't know how to fix that. Not not like that confident you know thing. It's like yeah, I built it. I know how to fix it. Of course. <laughs> yep. But it was like I didn't build that. I'm like, how do I do that? I'm like. Let me look at YouTube and figure that out. But sorry for, for this. No, idea. that's actually one of the things that I think was beneficial with all the problems that that printer was. It got a lot of people into printing. And yes. the reason that it was a problem is because it's a fire hazard. It doesn't have what's called thermal <laughs> runaway detection. So huh. if for some reason the part that heats up the nozzle comes loose, which isn't an unheard of thing. It's just a set screw. A set screw in an environment that gets up to 200 C probably will come loose at some point yeah if if your thermistor like drops out of the hot end yeah it'll melt what it reads is it's not hot enough because the the thermometer is still in your hot end so it says increase the temperature because it's just dangling outside of it so it's increasing the temperature getting hotter and hotter and hotter until it basically self-ignites the stuff that's in there then your wires catch fire though the wires are catching fire now all the plastic around it and acrylic and everything else starts catching fire. So it's a huge, huge, huge fire hazard. New The enders and all that stuff have gotten better because of printers like this. So it's funny. It's such a terrible printer, but we wouldn't be where we are now if not for printers like that. So, huh. well, it, And that's kind of like Bert Rutan saying that test pilots need to die. <laughs> and yeah. that the whole idea that you need to break things or or let, let me make it a little more pc and in, in the it world um there's business that has one philosophy that nothing ever breaks or goes bad and then there's um the social media silicon valley philosophy go fast break things yeah so in you know if you're not breaking things you're not learning Right. So um, we're we going to get my cam back. Okay, good. I was going to say we lost <laughs> his webcam. I don't know if it's still have audio. Speaking but... of breaking things, uh, yeah. 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 I switched yeah. over to the Sony. That's what my uh, holdup was today. I was trying to actually get the good camera up and running, but apparently it's yeah. uh, still lagging behind. So we'll, we'll switch back oh. to the shitty one. But uh, not too bad. Yeah. So, I mean, so it started off from needing a riser from a hand or for a red dot. And then my buddy's like, hey, I have a scope. Could you do a 30 millimeter scope? I'm like, I have a scope here too. I could probably design a scope mount. Like that might be cool. Um, that and the riser are both on my Thingiverse page. I think I posted those in like 2017. So it's been a, a little oh, bit. No. Um, so what filament did you use for the riser and the scope mount? So that was before PLA plus. So this Petchy. was just standard PLA. This oh, is PLA, not even yeah. Petchy. No, this was, I want to say it was eSun PLA. Um, and I, a dude in Australia told me he downloaded the, the scope mount. And I actually got a couple jobs from him for design work because he oh, said cool. he put it on his actual rifle and he put a few hundred rounds through it and it was holding zero. And he's like, I really like this. And I was like, this is my second design. I cannot believe that it's actually working. And that oh, kind of gave me that stuff. validation to like, maybe I could actually make an actual gun. Like, holy shit, I wonder. And then that's when I started seeing stuff like the Mac Daddy and other cool designs that were coming out at that mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And I have a pretty unique aesthetic, as most of the people who are familiar with my designs would say. So I was like, I like that. Mm -hmm. But I want it to be a little different. So that's where so, I started designing the mac and cheese. Nice. So I can show 
the Thingiverse page because it doesn't have any gun designs on it, right? There's no yeah. issues. Thingiverse with that. is totally virgin. To that. <laughs> I've shared the link to the website and Instagram and YouTube cool. already. Let me see. Did I do that? I don't update Thingiverse. So Thingiverse is kind of like an archive of the the before times. So okay, um, so which which from my perspective means it's safe, right? So yeah, totally fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got a youngster out there watching. It looks like too. All right. So, um, anyhow, on the on the Thingiverse page, some of those older things. If anyone wanted to see it, with that, is that the scope mount you're talking about here? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And oh. what's funny is I was looking back at that recently, and I was like, that does have my aesthetic. So even back then, that was the the chamfered edges, long straight filleted uh, or long straight chamfered edges with a small fillet on them, and. I, I built that uh I built that look early. <laughs> yeah. Neat. Okay. So you started with those kind of um th man, what's the word I want to say? I don't want to say that 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 you moved to things that are socially unacceptable. Oh, why did I put TJ <laughs> up there? I clicked the wrong thing. That's what I wanted. Uh because I find them very acceptable, but you know. Things that are more dangerous to post on the internet, potentially, if you don't want your your properties to get nuked. So, yeah. Um, so well, what it didn't? Yeah. What what sent you down that that other path to to fleeing the safety of things you can post on Thingiverse <laughs> to to things that you have to be more careful what you say about them? So seeing like the Mac Daddy and some other designs around that time. Um, made me kind of want to get into doing my own stuff because I wanted to have, I, was, I already had the curiosity. So I was like, how do I get into printing my own weapons? Like, yeah, there's a lot of files out there, but how do I start doing that myself? Um, and it was funny because I actually started doing, I think it, it took like six or seven of my own designs in the firearm world before I actually printed anyone else's because I just, I, I, Hyper focus, and then I go to something else, and I hyper focus, and I go to something else. Mm -hmm. I haven't had time to hyper focus on anyone else's stuff yet. So, but it was just falling, finding that one little thing, and then it's just a brick to the next, a brick to the next, and then it just keeps going up and up and up from there. Like curiosities, and what's great is through learning with some of my own stuff, um, I've learned much better design practices and collabing with some very smart people, um, some of which who are CAD and uh, engineering trait like trained and some other people who are self-taught i also learned some uh good and bad practices to implement on my own right um so i've got your site open and and it looks like this is a shopping area with a bunch of parts and things is that something that i am safe to show I wouldn't show we'll the shop area. Okay. There is a that's shop what, on my site if people are curious that. about what the parts and stuff look like, um, oh. which you're more than welcome to visit. But the projects page um, should have um, renders of them that should be safe to show. All right. I just have to figure out how to those get are just that one. renders of images. Is that what we're looking for? It should for? be files or projects up on top. Files. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Just didn't want us to disappear yeah. while we were talking <laughs> so this is all safe stuff i guess yes oh wow you got all the cool stuff in here i have i've been working on the website a lot so i don't have um not even half of the designs it's probably not even a quarter of the designs that i've done yet but those are uh the most recent ones and the most uh prolific ones i should say so far right Cool. All right. I, I'm a little disappointed. I clicked on Apple Strudel and I don't see any, any of anything else other than metal parts. So Apple Strudel is uh, the AUG receiver. So Steyr AUG. Uh, it's a DIY receiver. The there's a complication with stuff like that. So a normal printed firearm starts off as a roll of filament or whatever other material you're going to use and you turn it into a semi-automatic receiver with most of these we're starting off with mg surplus kits so there's a lot of work that has to be done to make them oh, legal Lordy, in Lordy. order to make them um so the average uh, walmart shopper isn't gonna make a machine gun and 
be like, oh shit, at the, the range and have someone visit them. So Apple Strudel is a unique case because we actually have to create denials and uh, make sure that they are easy enough for the average person to do, but also safe enough where if that person goes to the range and um, for some reason, the one in a million chance someone actually looks at it, it will be safe and not be a, a machine gun. Right. Cool. That's incredibly interesting to me. So uh, that's definitely something that I, I think I want to so venture this is down that path at some point. All right, I'm going to put you up receiver. on the big part of the screen. That, okay, yeah. That's this a, is a cool, cool AF receiver. Thank you. Yes. I wish I could show you the full thing right now, but I don't want to yeah. grab a firearm on screen. But the, the front of it actually has a gooseneck that comes down for like uh, – Pecs and uh, flashlights and lasers and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I've used mm -hmm. it. Don't. Um, ah. But that's the cool thing about 3D printing is if you can dream it and you can figure out how to put the numbers and lines and shapes onto a computer, you can make it. So I, I'm looking at, the, so I have the Nylog project here. Yep. And oh, all right. Let me do. Yeah. That. So this is the <laughs> five five six nylog. Mm -hmm. Um, just I, part I of it, some, not something I, that can be fired. I have some three hundred blackout barrels, uh, which I, I haven't basically my three hundred blackouts a single shot at this point. Uh, but I'm like super interested. I the trunnion looks the same, you know, just by similar. looking at your image but the rest of it is very different and very cool yeah. thank you yeah so, so it was definitely inspired by the nylog so mm -hmm. there's a few things that are the same um oh i see how it's working yeah, i see a hole for a threaded rod there yes so okay. ours doesn't use a threaded rod like the nylog ours uses um self-tapping i think they're actually deck screws but they hold on just the back and just the front so you're not having to run the whole thing through and then pinch it okay you're cinching the ends into the center set of section of that receiver mm -hmm. that way if one part messes up whatever you can take that part off fix it um and you're not trying to sandwich at all there's different tensions oh. and different uh, pressures when you sandwich versus cinch i got you so you're no, I'm not going to use that example. <laughs> say the I was Cadillac uh, <laughs> HD4100 cylinder head to deck, but so yeah, the Nylog has four uh, threaded rods, three mm -hmm. millimeter threaded rods through it. Um, which is there a problem with that, or or is that okay? No, I mean. I did things a little different uh, because mm -hmm. I didn't want to copy theirs and because mm -hmm. I intentionally didn't look at theirs when I started mine. I wanted mm -hmm. this project mm -hmm. to get done faster than what they were doing. So I okay. just said, all right, you know what? I'm going to wing it and we'll see where we go from there. Um, ironically, it ended up extremely similar uh, because how many ways are there to do this shape? Not many. Yeah, yeah there's... So. <laughs> So I, I think maybe we need to explain a little bit of history on the Nylog project. Um, the basically an AUG receiver, oh, an actual AUG is something like this. Now I, I got a scope and a flashlight on it, so it's a bit of a monster. But the Ripping important that part, <laughs> yes, the important that middle part. Tomato <laughs> is this portion here which is now in the 3d printed world mm. this portion yeah the the actual aug has this quick release barrel system which isn't that interesting because if you can you know just remove the entire receiver and replace it who cares about just the barrel Mm -hmm. So the Nylog, you lose that feature, but you 3D print the receiver, and basically it's kind of like a triangle, an extruded triangle with rounded corners. <laughs> and this looks incredibly complex, but realistically, the simple parts are simple. Mm -hmm. And and that's what you get. You know, basically, well, 
that gets you an AUG. So that AUG I got on sale for $1,400. You can mm. get a parts kit for $300-ish barrel in other parts. Pretty much under 500 bucks, you can build an iLog or your version of the Apple Strudel. Yep. Right? Yep. And it's called the Nylog because nylon is one of the most uh, durable filaments that you can print at home on most of the printers with some upgrades. So like this is a um, PA12 nylon filled with carbon fiber or carbon fiber or carbon filled. There's a debate on if it's actually fibers or powder, but um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different nylon variants that are normally very flexible, but when you add filled components to it, be it carbon or glass, they stiffen up and get very rigid and a lot more durable than uh, a traditional like nylon would be. So, oh, the, the one thing I didn't touch on about the nylog, and, and so same thing with yours, is you're using the KAK barrel. Yes. The KAK barrel is a modified AR-15 barrel. So you can see the, the pin and mm -hmm. uh, the barrel extension here. The AUG bolt is basically an AR-15 bolt, but just a little deeper. So yeah. if you shim it, an AR extension on an AR barrel just right, that bolt will close properly. If it's not shimmed, <laughs> it's literally well, right. like 0.053 inch off. So it's enough where it makes a huge difference. And if you don't shim it, it won't lock up. Like, right. it's just enough. Well, wow. so the, the brains behind. 3D printing an AUG, and, and we're not 3D printing an AUG, we're 3D printing an AUG receiver, yep. is whoever figured out, and, and I don't know who's responsible for that, but oh my gosh, an AR barrel that's shimmed will work. Mm -hmm. I mean, who figured that out? That was probably either because 2A or Casca. Um, okay. When I came in, they were still doing DIY barrels with shims, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, but at the time, uh, V and myself were both talking to KK, both coming up with basically identical dimensions, oh, okay. sending them off and saying, hey, this is what I think we need for this project. And then when the barrels came out, I was like, hey, V, you guys are getting these barrels too, right? He goes, yeah. And I go, this is the sketch I sent over. He goes, yeah, that's just basically exactly what I sent over in a different file format. And I'm like, all right, well... <laughs> So yeah, we basically took an AR barrel extension that they custom make now for that that length, and it fits perfectly. You have to modify the cage a little bit, uh, Dremel down the radius on the inside of it, so it cycles just fine. But I mean, it locks up perfect every time now. You mean right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so what he's talking about is that corner. Yeah, and that's because the teeth on an AR extension are a little bit different than an AUG, or AUG's teeth on their barrel. Ooh, this is my Ratworks left-handed bolt. Gross. Well, we refer to those as wrong-handed bolts. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just for clarity. So we have had a couple questions from uh, <laughs> G-Web's gun websites uh, that, that we got to keep in mind. We can come back to best printers and best filaments here in a moment. We, we've touched on a little bit of both of those. He also asked uh, how much attention is being made to the development of 3D printing, any resources you can recommend. So I want to come back to that in a touch as well, uh, because we were kind of diving into some of your specific things. I, I don't want to mm -hmm. cut off your story because we were, we were getting into some of the things you designed and you said you mm -hmm. have an aesthetic. Um, I, I, it feels like we're getting closer to current state of where you are. I, I want to know, you know, rat, uh, help us, help us understand the full story of where you are today, but also where, where do you see this going? And then we can come back to some of those more generic, you know, 3d printing discussions. Sure. A bit. Well, what's funny is, um, I, for the last seven years, I've been a video producer um, doing commercials and product videos and photos and stuff like that. And uh, most recently, uh, the most recent employment for that was this 
huge dealership with 50 plus roofs um, for RVs and all the different brands of automakers and um, all that stuff. So making commercials for like Mercedes and stuff um, or Mercedes Benz. Sorry, I have to say Benz. Who's you'll get fined, yeah. but <laughs> I'm Ben. Um, I was actually with the support of the community and buying through the shop and supporting through it's a Patreon like service. It's called buy me coffee where people can su subscribe every month to there because of people supporting me through the shop and through that service, I was actually able to leave that job and go full time into this. It's not paying oh, cool. as good, uh, but I'm able to at, at least scrape by right now. Um, and it looks, I mean, there's good perspectives on that. It's definitely going up. So um it started as just something where i was like maybe i can make some stuff for cheap to now be like i could make enough cool stuff to put out there where people actually buy it i also give the files and all the information away for free so you don't have to get it from me you can go to your local hardware store and get everything but um at least you have that option and it supports the dev that made it so cool and and i'm happy to hear you were able to pull that off i know uh it's scary I, I've been doing gear report full time for for geez a, f a few years at this point, probably three or four years at this point. And I'll tell you what, man, sometimes it's amazing. Sometimes it's like, no, no, no trust me, kids. We'll Eighty percent of the time, it's scary. We'll have, yeah, <laughs> we'll have heat. We'll have food. You'll be able to still do things, uh, but sometimes it gets a little tight. So, um, you know, good on you for figuring out how to make that work. And, I'll tell uh, you, my previous relationships, no one was really supportive of anything that I had hobbies or things that I was interested mm -hmm. in, and even like the video stuff. Like, if you're not doing it for work, they're not paying you. Don't do it. Um, now I have a wife that encouraged me to do, make that jump. She's like, if you think you can okay. do it fucking go for it i'm like that's all awesome. are you sure like are you like now i'm like you have too much faith in me like is that... <laughs> so it's kind of that I, i've been right? telling my wife like, oh. my youtube revenue of 60 bucks a month we can live on that yeah i can't even get monetized a little every time yeah. that i get close i get more strikes like there was a time where i had a few videos um the are, last are you one trying to them... emulate the 3d per general so I, his stuff happened right after mine, and I think after mine, they started making some changes because I got one strike, but I got seven videos taken down, and that was 80% of my views. All of those big videos that I had were the ones that got taken down. Um, a few of them weren't. A few of them were like, one, I had a, um, a slider just going across the printer as it was dark and I had some cool moody lights. I used it for a background uh, on a website. And it was printing drone parts, but it got taken down for firearms violation. And when I appealed it, it still got rejected. And when I re appealed it again, it still got rejected. So now, how do you like, appeal it a second time? There was a glitch in the system when they fixed or when they updated stuff, and then they did 3D print general stuff. There was a glitch where I was able to go back in and appeal all my stuff, and all of it got denied again. So I'm just like, they don't even like no one's looking at this. Like you right. have to be a big YouTuber with the number of the they guy. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, he was at an event we were at. You could have talked to him. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. And I wish I'd have made on. contact with that person because, I mean, while they're firearm specific YouTube rep um, that, that was there at that event, yeah. um, maybe they would maybe they would have been able to put me in contact with, with a real person about my guitar channel being nuked as well who knows um so but but speaking of of what platforms are you able to have more open discussions on like if people say you know yes they can find you on youtube and i already shared the link in mm -hmm. the in the comments for that um like i just shared um uh rumble link as well Thanks. so where Thanks. where where can people get more information on what you're doing I'm trying to make the website a one-stop shop. So middletomid.com, I'm hoping um, one of my goals for 2024 is to actually get a lot of guides. So if you're new to 3D printing, not necessarily 3D printing firearms, but just 3D printing in general, you can go there and get some information. I'm also into cameras. Um, let me see. I have the thing in here still. Um, I do. So like anamorphic stuff on the Lolo. So like this is a cheap camera, but I have a filter in there with a little line through it that huh. gives you anamorphic flares 
that gives you anamorphic bokeh. So like doing anamorphic stuff, which is generally pretty expensive. Um, I have a passion for camera stuff too. So I'm going to have a lot of different guides on there. So if you're interested yeah. in anything Ooh. 3D printing, I'm hoping to have people who can also write on there and give their perspective on things and their expertise. Cool. So I want to make it a one-stop shop to go there to get more information. But right now, um, I'm kind of on YouTube. I have like five videos that are mostly done, but there's just that hesitation to like finish it and hit post because every time I do, yeah, but, I mean, there, there's so many alternate platforms out there. Yeah. So I started player. Um, that mm -hmm. one seems to be the most yep. welcoming. Um, they're very in our, our wheelhouse. Um, formerly so, but, so you were able to use their monetization system. I, I haven't gotten paid out on it, but I am signed up for it, and all okay. my payment information is on there. Yeah, I, okay. I'll have because... to look at that because I'm on there. I guess all of my videos go there from YouTube, but yeah, uh, YouTube gave me a one week vacation because I talked <laughs> about some thing that happened to the United States a couple of years ago, <clears throat> yeah. and uh, so I, I went over to Rumble and I set up a live stream and I shot guns in my backyard live on Rumble. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There's not much over there right now. Um, I definitely haven't focused on it, but if anything ever happens yeah. to my YouTube, that'll be where I primarily post videos. Yeah. Um, the only issue is YouTube's unfortunately the only one that has good embedding. So if you want to put stuff on websites, mm. like you can embed from player, but it gives you a weird player, ironically. Um, so it's just, I don't know. It's one of those things where like the worst company has the best uh platform unfortunately right. i'm also on reddit on x or twitter or whatever mm, yeah. uh, i barely use any other platform other than instagram but i'm on the other ones facebook all that stuff yeah yeah i'm pretty sure i shot guns live on instagram they haven't done anything to me so i think you can i th they're so weird with the rules like you can do live events where you out of range no, in my backyard. Oh, well. You, you go to a range to shoot range. guns? I go to my garage and I have a shoot barrel, but <laughs> <laughs> um, that should be a guide too. The shoot barrel's awesome. Oh, yeah. My, yeah. my wife yeah. hates it, but <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, it works up to 5.56. Five, so six. your wife doesn't do, you're not doing gun stuff again, are you? No. You don't she get knows that. that I'm doing gun stuff. And she, she's oh. also learned that whenever anyone asks, like, oh, well, what does your husband do? Product design. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrong. Yeah. No. He, you got to figure he out develops how cool cordless hole punchers and product design. <laughs> That's that meme, the, hey, can I add you on Facebook? You got to get cool about a lot of shit real fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I tell people you make adult products, you design adult products. <laughs> That's what I would say. He in a second, uh, products for adults and a kind of what do you do? Have you been in <laughs> Adam and Eve lately? That's so, that called. that's like all right, I, I've learned at one job they knew what I did. That's the last time that'll ever happen. That did not yeah. help me in any way, shape, or form. So, the last gig I had with a global global cloud engineering firm or a firm that needed global cloud engineering. Let me say that right. They're like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I grow dragon fruit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we, we talked about the history. We talked about current state and how you are uh, growing things and providing guides. And I'm looking forward to that because I, I'm trying to move quickly, and uh, there's a lot of disparate information out there. I think that there's a, um, there's, there's a real need for folks, and this is something that, that I'm going to try to provide a little bit of, but I'm going to provide it from the standpoint of, um, you know, come learn this with me, you know? So, yeah. so mm -hmm. we, we've done all your promotion. I don't want to detract from that even a little bit, but I do want to share with people the new... Um, gear report maker channel and i'll show you the version that's on youtube because you know like like you said they've got the they've got the audience they've got the tools you know mm -hmm. so that's where we're putting things to start out 
but we also have the um, the channel on Rumble to give us a little bit more freedom in in what we do. Uh, let's Good plan. see. And um, so I'm going to drop that link out there as well because you know why not? You bring cool people on to talk about all the neat stuff they're doing. Why not do a little self promotion as well? Right? That's not rude, is it? <laughs> no. I hope not. I hope not. A little awkward, you maybe. Better. I do apologize for that. But no, get good. to know me better. Awkward is like ninety eight percent of what you get from me. So that's part me of the too. fun. Yeah. One of the one of the things that I'm really excited for is doing a lot of figuring out myself because the if you saw my AR receiver at the uh, event that we were at, there was a plum receiver that was my apple pie or grandma's apple pie. It's a more traditional recipe um, of the AR-15. I had the yeah. super safety in there, and that was originally a receiver that I printed because I wanted it to fail, and I wanted to see where it failed because it was the wrong material to print an AR receiver in. Would, everyone's always said that if you print a AR receiver in PETG, it's going to oh, break. Don't I've, so I used PETG CF, so it's even more brittle. So it should crack and it yeah. should break. I have a thousand rounds suppressed and unsuppressed of 300 blackout, 556. And I we had it out in the sun all those days, like on that table. And when it wasn't in the sun, it was in an ice bath, like in water, ice water. So it got both moisture, which PETG isn't supposed to be in. It's mm -hmm. very, it'll absorb moisture and direct sunlight. These are terrible scenarios for any printed gun. And it's still sitting on that wall plugging through like so hmm. i want to do more experiments like that where i'm not going to do an analytical test with a, a thing that gives you this takes 12 megapascals to break like a lot of the people on youtube are doing i want the real world thing like it might take 11 or 12 versus six but is six plenty enough for a clock like it might be like who knows <laughs> Okay, so that's probably a good segue to talk about printers and filaments, and and I don't, I mean, this could probably be hours long discussion, but uh, you know, Rich was pretty straightforward with me. Just order one yeah. of the Bamboo Labs products, yeah. uh, which I completely ignored, and and it yeah. was it was partially because I wanted the bigger bed. It was partially uh, the overall cost, and it was partially that Chris who is, you know, I mentioned the, the gear report contributor yeah. that lives, you know, four minutes from me has a bamboo X one C. So, um, you know, I can, I can access that there. I wanted to mm -hmm. do something completely this, different. This is, and this is strictly for the listeners, viewers, Jeff, will ignore <laughs> everything, every, that these guys are going to tell him. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> All right, I'm I'm gonna give the quick pitch. The quick yeah. pitch is from somebody that built an A net A eight that <laughs> had uh, Ender threes with Octoprint with cameras with on premise spaghetti detective. So I have an AI watching my prints, like as much intelligence and in automation as you could possibly have on an ender three and mm -hmm. i'm pre clipper so uh i i did later get a sonic pad but it's kind of like knowing everything about points condensers rotors uh uh any kind of non coil over plug ignition and being a guru about carburetors vacuum secondaries all of that and then somebody say, oh, by the way, we just went to, you know, direct fuel injection and coil over plug ignition. You have a good day, guy. And that's the difference between using a bamboo P1P and mm -hmm. anything that came before it. Mm -hmm. it and the, it's like, but no, I know all of this stuff. I've learned all of this. I know all of these things are now completely useless. Thank you, bamboo. <laughs> that's that's pretty much one of the biggest things is bamboo is like the the mainstay now it's a meme that people are like just get a bamboo because mm -hmm. it is that easy where before having to troubleshoot you know i'm getting over extreme i'm getting these layer lines now you just hit calibrate on your machine you do the auto calibration if you have the one with lidar others you do it manually but it has calibration built in for your extrusion you go from there. If you're still having issues after that, there's guides on their website with every little setting has its own bamboo wiki on what that setting does. 
So you you figure it out very easily if you have the time and the knowledge to not message every one of the developers that you know on YouTube and say, hey, I'm having problems with my printer. If you can just do it yourself, you'll do it in like less than a day. You'll have perfect prints. Normally out of the box, you got perfect prints, which is crazy. I um, So I have the X1C and the P1S right there. Ah, nice. Um, they're both fantastic, uh, but they do have security concerns. That's one of the things where if you are concerned about any of that kind of stuff, uh, like the them seeing what you have, their latest privacy policy update does state that they can show the live feed and recordings from your camera to whoever they want. They have access to that, and that, that's their, their permissions uh, that you agreed to. <laughs> so one of the designs I'll be coming out with will be a camera cover. Uh, not for myself, because I don't do anything that I'd feel that needs to be hidden, but there's a lot of people to do. <laughs> so um, outside of Bamboo, if you didn't want to get that, the Creality K1 is its like direct competitor that uses Clipper, which is essentially a... Um, the easy way to think of it is it's Bamboo Lite. It's basically the alternative to it. It's... Uh, it's open source stuff that you can just kind of throw on your printer. It does all the calculations and everything for you. You can do some stuff in there to tweak it and boom, fast printing, which is what people want and good prints, which is usually not the two parts of the pyramid you get together. It's cheap, mm -hmm. fast and good. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You somehow get a little bit of all of those on that. Yeah. So my, my beef with the bamboo is you know so going back to the a net a8 you turned every screw on that you connected every wire so was there anything about that printer you didn't know frick no you knew everything about that sticking printer the ender was a very small step away from that but the ender mm -hmm. was still all open source mm -hmm. and so the first time i had a beef with the bamboo was i had an issue and basically the extruder cover with the fan got full of uh, carbon fiber nylon, which is harder than the material mm -hmm. the cover's made out of. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't just download a file and buy a new 5150 mm -hmm. fan and you know print one of these parts on another printer mm -hmm. that I owned. So there is pretty much everything on every other printer that's out there, like in, in even a Prusa, you can print another part mm -hmm. if you if you, something goes wrong. So uh, and I just had it happen again. I had a print. I, I don't have the parts handy. Come off the bed of my bamboo and go into and knock off a third of the blades on my cooling fan. So one of my bamboo P1Ps was down for you know a week mm -hmm. as I ordered. And, and in fact, I ordered X1 carbon fans or, or whatever covers with the fan Oops. by mistake last i'm like oh i got this part I'm like uh it's not for the p1p they did a good job so, of making them not backwards compatible yeah yeah and <laughs> we, which was stupid i mean they, they could have had this anyhow so there's it it is kind of the apple of 3d printing it's like mm -hmm. yeah you don't need to know these things you don't need really you don't need to know these things just yeah. buy more crap from us now the prices aren't bad it was like 15 bucks but i i was down for a week and mm -hmm. in that situation i'd also i'd rather and i don't know if this is too geek for most people i have a vmware home lab and i have docker home lab stuff going on when i did spaghetti detective it was just a couple of lines of code to run a docker container with spaghetti detective in it you know what even if bamboo doesn't open source everything if they allowed me to bypass the bamboo cloud by running a docker container with my bamboo ish local mm -hmm. i would be happy about that you know what don't give me the source code don't give me all of the magic give me a docker container or something like that and because even I'm an IT geek and I've rolled my own home security for the most part, mm -hmm. my paradigm is nothing in my home security talks off my network. It's, it's all on my network. Mm -hmm. So I'm like really nails on the chalkboard with the bamboo, the security model and all of that. Yeah. 
I have in in both of my models, I have an AMS uh, unit, which is their multi-filament, so you can just switch between them um, units. And both of mine have two slots that are down, so I'm down to two. Hmm. The P1S has sometimes three. One of them sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Wow. Um, I don't know. I'm I don't know what's up, but that's one of the things is I have to get those parts from bamboo. I can't get mm-hmm. well. There are some China China Lake uh, kind of knockoffs, but you're going to wait the same amount of times. So it's like uh-huh. I'll just pay more and get them directly from bamboo at that point. But that is a downside is I can't just go on there and print a lot of those files. Um, they do have some files available to print, but not the like main components that you need like that. So, you can't print an AMS hub. <laughs> knowing that the um, the core team at Bamboo came from DJI, mm-hmm. and you mentioned you were printing some drone parts, I think you said earlier, right? So my limited experience with DJI, a friend got one a couple years ago, and we tried to just get it to hover. It, it was actually outside the the scout meeting building which happens to be close to the local airport Mm -hmm. well like rich i'm a pilot too i know not to fly up above the tree line and get in the way of planes coming into land i just wanted to hover the thing and it wouldn't even take off and i I looked at that level of control and was Mm -hmm. like you know what i don't see me ever buying a dji drone because i you know what I, i don't need you telling me what i can do and what i can't do I'm concerned about the the bamboo printers at some point them saying, oh, well, you're printing gun parts. No, we're going to shut you off. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. I actually used to work um, at DJI Arizona. I was the general manager, and that's where I started doing video production was mm-hmm. for DJI Arizona. And that was actually a huge issue with us was if we had a job that was anywhere near Sky Harbor or any of the other places, because mm-hmm. there's an Air Force base down there too. Sure. Um, you had to have all these different permissions and all that kind of stuff. And us being DJ Arizona on our machines, we had a login that had like an unlimited lock or um, basically an unlimited lockout so we could fly wherever. Mm-hmm. But any of the new stuff that we'd get in, like, oh, the new drone, we got to get footage of the new drone to make a video for it just came out. Couldn't do it. Like that machine hadn't been unlocked yet. So, wow. And that's one of the hard things is, yeah, I mean, the DJI is. A lot of, gets a lot of stuff uh, for being a little overly ambitious. Like they're not the police, they're not the regulators. Why are they the ones regulating me? And all of us, I mean, we have a Part 107 licenses and stuff like that. So it's like we sh- or certification. So we should be able to do that. Like we're we're certified to fly. Why can't we fly? Like, <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you have any of those concerns about bamboo following that type of path of, of making themselves like the regulator or cooperating with regulators to, to shut you down if they don't like what you're doing? You know, I think a lot of people when they f- first started doing some of the security things felt that way, but I don't think I do. I think they know that a good portion of their market is firearms. And if they were to do that, not only would the firearms people be concerned and probably go over to like the Creality K1 or whatever alternatives there may be at that time. I think a lot of other security minded people would also do that. One of the big features of the um, X1E, which is the enterprise edition of the carbon, uh, that one is able to be used in LAN mode. So you don't have to connect it to a network well, um, all of them you can use in land mode. Well, this one, what was the difference? This one is Ethernet. So you can oh, direct wire okay. it to your router. You have full okay. functionality without connecting to the web. You can be directly wired to a machine that you've never connected. You installed via USB uh-huh. for the slicer and all that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Um, I think unless they were to give that to everyone and they did anything to slight uh, any like sex toys or bongs or whatever else people are printing, they would be like, or, or just let, let's say DRM. Cause realistically uh, in DRM digital rights management. Yeah. And so there could be, maybe it's like a baby Yoda. Like you can't print a baby Yoda. Yeah. Rogue Trademark copyright Yoda. type stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's, let's just, let, let's not make it a, cordless hole puncher let's just make it a you know a disney copyrighted character they have Um, actually already made moves with that because they have their maker world uh 
file space basically it's like fingerverse and like the other um 3d repositories but they have that built in so you can just go on there it has all the files ready to print you just hit print and it takes that file pre-slices it for you sends it to your printer you can be in argentina and you can start printing a baby yoda at home but for some of that stuff they have actually already started to um mess with people's uh, posts and take them down if they violate any uh, DRM or CC. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's one person I saw actually is either yesterday or today. I can't remember at this point, but uh, he did a remix of someone else's and didn't do the same uh, like CC number four share like non commercial. He did one that was less than that, uh-huh. and they took it down because it wasn't the same one. So yeah. CC meaning Creative Commons. Yes. yes. Yep. So they're already doing some of that. Um, who knows but if they'll go for like corporations and stuff. That's not a printer company doing it. No, that's Bamboo Labs. Bamboo Labs. Oh, it is Bamboo Labs. Yeah, they run uh, their own makerspace. If you open up the slicer oh, and oh, all those okay. prints that so show up on the cloud thing. slicer stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it's a repository. You can upload your own files on there as long as they're not mm-hmm. firearm related. They'll take those down immediately. But yeah, oh, um, okay. you can download. Well, you don't actually download. You just you save the the project file. Mm-hmm. It has all the settings. It has everything built in. Like <laughs> so. So I've heard some people say, and I and I don't know these people. You probably would know them far better than I do because I'm very new to the 3D printing space. But when I was trying to decide what to get, I saw um, a guy that was saying, like, if you're doing any product development of things that you may want to have some IP protection, or um, you just don't want people to see what you're doing, or maybe you print something, uh, a company sends you something, but you're under NDA. Mm -hmm. If you print it and it hits the cloud, Bamboo has per their terms of service, they have rights to have access to all of that. Like, they basically can get it, print it, share it, do whatever they want with it. Um, as someone who is building a company around original designs and IP, you know, what, mm-hmm. I mean, I know you also said you're sharing files out there pretty freely, but do, do you have any concerns about that? I don't know. I'd have to see if that's fully true. I think it's partially true. I think they, if you upload it to their makerspace, they absolutely do, but if you just slice files and print them, I don't think they have access to those. I could be wrong. Um, they may have updated their terms of service even yeah. since the one that I just mentioned um, to include that, but at that time, that wasn't included. Um, if they were to do that, I mean, there are also files that I'm working with that are under NDA, um, CS at Chacho, <laughs> but the... Um, that would be a, a big issue, but you can mm-hmm. also print via USB or mm-hmm. not USB uh, SD card. So it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it'd be getting rid of one of the huge conveniences of having yeah. a bamboo labs with the bamboo slicer. I, yeah. I, I, I gotta tell you, I don't know why I just feel completely Neanderthal. If I have to slice <laughs> a print and take a micro SD card. Yeah, like, okay, here we go. Let me, yeah, yeah. So the the printer that I just got is a Elegoo Neptune 4 Max, and it comes with an old version <laughs> of Cura mm-hmm. that I haven't been able to get to. Like, I, it's popped up and said it was connected once or twice, but I can't figure out like why it connects sometimes and it doesn't others. I'm I'm putting stuff on USB and walking it across the room, uh, yeah. but then I hook up Orca, and it connects, and I can monitor the camera and you know, send files, stop files, change the temperatures. You know, I can, I can do all that stuff remotely. And uh, I, so I understand exactly what you're saying. In the very limited amount of time I've been doing this, the very limited amount of times I've had to walk across the office, I was already annoyed and like, oh, screw mm-hmm. this. Well, the camera is a game changer because I used to have my printers in a different room. So I'd start the uh-huh. print, uh-huh. first layer goes down good. All right, we're good. I'd walk away. Yeah. I'd come back six hours later and just doing whatever the hell it wants to do. And it's not what it's supposed to be. Mm. And sometimes if it, if that nozzle catches that filament, it it'll create like a ball around that nozzle and that ball can encompass your whole hot end. You can kill your printer by doing that. Most of the time you just kill the nozzle, but you could kill your printer by doing that. If it gets hot, 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 and it doesn't have thermal runaway detection. So, yeah. 
Oh, I found this morning. Um, I was able to, and I don't, I'm trying to remember what, because I'm learning all of this stuff. Uh, the interface I'm using is fluid. And I don't know what serves that, what types of printers will serve that. I mean, I have a clipper printer, but I don't know if that's part of being able to use that. But I woke up this morning and the longest print I've ever done, like I've been baby stepping my way up to mm -hmm. doing, the, you know, full size stuff. But mm -hmm. I ran two parts, two guitar body parts that needed about 10 hours. Yeah. I woke up this morning. I was like, I need to go check that print. But it's cold and I'm under the covers. I picked my phone up and went to the browser and looked at yeah. it and I could see it moving back and forth and every it actually was beautiful. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I didn't have to even it's get out like of bed a superpower. To check it. Yeah. 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 Wait, wait, when you can remotely see and control your printer, yeah, it's it's like a superpower. Then things Just like, like I can stay in bed all day now. I, yeah. So yeah. I would have my printers with um the push bullet plug-in so when the print finishes it sends me a message to my phone and my watch of with a picture of the finished print that's cool i'm like oh my print finished I've, there's been multiple times where i'm away doing work or many cities away and the print finishes and i can just take a look on the app all right we're good nice when yeah. i get home yeah. i know i got something to look forward to rather than being like oh, oh yeah. when i get home it, it works like <laughs> oh yeah that, that's that's pretty freaking exciting yeah i have like no idea what you guys are talking about on three quarters of this stuff mm -hmm. just so you know <laughs> just just for honcho asking if i could 3d print hair man i got all the hair i could possibly want here i don't even know why you he were he wears jeff has all that that's his natural hair he wears he wears one of those skull cap <laughs> wigs yeah or skull cap so yeah. nobody can see <laughs> yeah yeah well it it all started a few years ago when i was actually at shot show and rich didn't know it but i saw him and i was like that bald look is pretty cool i think Damn. i'm gonna go for that <laughs> yeah it, it was a life-changing experience you stole your look me. Having having breakfast with Flying Rich, uh, even though I wasn't at Shot Show apparently. So, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, you did not. Yeah, I still and, giggle. Yeah, Every and with time. that, I ended up like this. So, yeah, the influence you have—you never know. So, <laughs> let's see. Is there is there anything else that we want to talk about? I thought you know, since TJ finally said something, we haven't coaxed. I was, I, dude, I have, I have no idea what yet. you guys are talking about. Any of this stuff, I don't. I do <laughs> have a goal here of making sure that everyone speaks at some point in the. Program. I, that's why I figured I'd speak now. There was a little break, and I was like, just letting everybody know you haven't heard <laughs> me because it's total gobbledygook. Don't but, understand. All right. <laughs> so with a three D printer, the TJ will appreciate this. You can print router guides with your three D printer. Yes. So if you want to do dovetail joints. Nope. You can print what is it the, where everybody wants to drill like these slide angles for screws? Oh, pocket holes. The, yeah. Yeah. But I have yeah, I can. have those tools. I have those tools already though. Yeah, but for us pores that don't have that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. Or if you need a different ones. So you like have, you're not pores, you have three you're not pores, you have three D printers. I just have tools. <laughs> you have a car that drives itself, Rich. Come on. So like I needed a zero yeah. or a, a zero gap uh, plate for my table saw because the one that came with it was kind of shit. So I just uh, catted it up. Boom. <laughs> I needed to uh, have some push sticks, but I didn't want to use just scrap wood. And the one I had was getting kind of eat up. I just five minutes in CAD, hit print. I don't, I don't use them. 60 minutes later. So let's talk about. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. It's so just in case you're wondering, I do not use them personally. Do not recommend it for anybody else, but I have them. Yeah, I think. Since since we since we got TJ talking, let's assume that TJ as a someone <laughs> as, as I was two weeks ago, never owned a printer, never printed anything, never designed anything. Um, I would just buy a bamboo. Man, that sounds cool. Like, I like, like don't what, take three D printing advice really? from this guy. I like yeah. what all these people are talking about. Um, you you say that, Rich, and I know you're probably <laughs> correct. But so far, I've had nothing but phenomenal experience. Wait, so. Rich. I'm very pleased thus far. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know, I'm sure that you're going to be proven right before this is all done. But oh, I, ha I have no question about that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but I did what I did. So there. And yeah, you know, I like to learn things the hard way. That's the fun way sometimes, uh -huh. right? This is a learning journey. I'm trying to figure out how I can learn more. Uh, yeah. But but I want to hear. Is that the 
fuck around, find out curve we're talking about. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to meet Rich here in a second. Ethan, I want to hear from you. If we want to set TJ up to print cool stuff, and he's, he's a gun guy, right? So let's just assume that he would have some proclivities in that direction. It would be. Um, sex toys out of something flexible as well <laughs> may or may not be on the menu. I don't know. But let's say he wants to do that. What would your recipe be for him? Like, here's what, you know, give him a shopping list of today. What should he get? It really depends on budget and what you're intending to do with it. But if... um Ooh. You wanted to get into industries where you're going to be doing a lot of flexible stuff. They're actually, you can print molds. You can print stuff to do casting. Mm -hmm. um, so I know people who have made daggers and swords and stuff like that. And they've been able to print that part in there and do lost PLA casting and have a metal sword or dagger at the end. It's not going to be a functional one if you're doing castings. Or, or you could print a mold for printing. garden gnomes. Could do that, yeah. Yeah, out of common <laughs> Um, I know people who have done, um, like, it sounds dumb, but if you got someone who's into, like, gardening stuff, you can print vases and then cast those in cement. You oh, can yeah. use that as a form. So you can have, like, when people come by, you can like, print wow, GPU. how much did that cost? And you're like, like, six bucks. And they're like, where? And you're like, I made it. And they're like, no. You're like, yeah, 3D printer and some concrete that I got yeah. at Home Depot for cheap. $2. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I mean, especially if you want to get into building stuff, like being able to do jigs and, um, templates and stuff like that, like it's huge to be able to have something dimensionally perfectly accurate versus the way I used to do stuff, which is trace it on MDF, cut it out with a router, sand the edges. Yeah. Like I'll get something perfect and then I can just, uh, trace it with a router. So it's way easier to do a lot of that kind of work. Yeah. Um, if you're doing even like, um, so look when the P80s had their issues and the jigs couldn't be purchased anymore for like a week, I think that lasted. Mr. Snow came well, out. It, with, it's it's been like a ping pong ball. Yeah, ball. It's, but we came out or Mr. Snow came out with a jig to be able to uh -huh. drill that himself. So yep. in order to locate holes on things, having a jig that you can just here's the model, here's a block, subtract that model from it, give it a clearance. Now I know exactly where to drill those holes with exactly the right drill bit, and it's deep enough where it's going to be a guide. That thing costs you maybe four bucks in material if you're using a good PLA. You can use yeah. the cheap stuff and make it even cheaper. So it's like just being able to locate. It doesn't have to be firearm-related stuff, but being able to do anything. Oh, actually, one dude was sharpening uh, chisels, and like he had a guide, so he just sits it on there and... There he goes. He had a, a guy that cost him 50 cents. And it's just as good as the one that my buddy has that's like a $50 one. Wow. Uh, although his looks better, but <laughs> yeah. Aesthetics um, are you know, part of it. I print little like trays for my Raspberry Pis. Actually, this isn't a Raspberry Pi, but it's so so uh, I can stack yeah. them in a cluster. Right. Uh, that's really a rock 5A. It's got 16 gigs of RAM. But one of the things you can get into is printing housings for stuff like this. So we have an actual NVG. Um, let me pull this thing off here real quick. So this is a PVS-5 um, with a J-arm that I whipped up. And I have the battery cap off of it right now, but... Um, I originally printed this in PLA CF, so carbon filled PLA looked really good. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to ball out. There's services that you can get even professionally printed stuff. So this is, uh, PA 11 from, uh, MK machining. Awesome dude, by the way. Um, but you can get professionally made stuff that works just as good as I can. And sometimes even better than injection molding and stuff like that. So like the military lightweight or ruggedized um, PVAS 14 housings are made out of this material. Hmm. And I got it printed for mine. Cool. Lots of neat uses there. Um, but, but so I hadn't heard a recipe yet. I heard it depends on cost. So let's give us, give us a entry level, you know, Minimum money you can spend and have a reasonable setup. What what would you prescribe there? 
if you're not opposed to bamboo, they just came out with the A1 series. You can get set up with the A1 printer for 400 bucks, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't have a huge bed, but it's the standard size bed that most of the printers have. Um, for a little bit more, you can get the multi-filament system that they have on there. I think it's mm-hmm. 600, something like that. And I mean, filament is PLA plus, um, 22 bucks a roll for the pretty good stuff. Um, I personally use Polymaker and Duramic the most. Those are like the two go-tos for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, for if, for less than $500, really, including whatever parts you need to build a firearm or whatever project you're going to do, I mean, you can start making stuff. Re- realistically, the limit is what files are already out there or what you can make yourself. Right. Um Less than 500 bucks, you can get a bamboo, some filament. If you don't want bamboo, go uh, Creality. They have the Ender Series. Um, those are tried and true. I don't really like them, uh, but millions of people have them. Um, Prusa is like the de facto. They were they were top dog before bamboo. Bamboo kind of oh, yeah. knocked okay. them off their throne. But um, they're also made by a company that makes very good, high-quality products. So... But I mean, then you're starting to get into thousands of dollars um, when you start looking at a $1,500 Prusa and all that kind of stuff. But the good thing that comes with a lot of the higher end ones is that learning curve goes from this to this because a lot of those have built in profiles for the filaments that they sell, Prusa bamboo specifically. But you get either those and you're like, hey, I need to print this guitar body out of this really cool filament. You just put that in there, select the material, hit print, you put it on strong setting versus fast setting, and boom. <laughs> yeah. What I saw, the, isn't that so a Jeff, thing? If with, you would have uh, gotten a bamboo. Oh, I know, I know. And, I like the I had, one, I had a P1S in the cart, and I was ready to get it, and it was <laughs> going to be It was gonna be more, like, cost-wise, I was like, you know, I I can eat the additional cost, but the... the um, I, I have really, really big um, privacy concerns. And, and yeah, I mean, it's all the stuff we talked about already that it just gave me enough heartburn that I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm just not comfortable with that. China. You know, maybe I will get comfortable <laughs> with it. I don't know. But, yeah. But for now, I, I just kind of, I couldn't get past that. Give you the old, they give you the old TikTok agreement where they can just, get into everything you have. Well, it's kind of what it sounded like as I looked into it. All right. We mm-hmm. have, we've have gone over time wise. We usually try to, yeah. stop we kept going because <laughs> of the whole discussion. I appreciate everyone being here. Appreciate all the questions. We'll make last call for anyone. If there's anything you're just dying to ask, get it in there now. Uh, speak now or wait till next week. Uh, I'm dying yeah, to yeah. ask, but Milton can just read my IG question. I said <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, Komar, are, are you going to participate today or are you just happy to be here with us? Uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, I think I'm learning. I've been, the, uh, I've been printing the spicy meatball during the. Uh, there you go. This, uh, <laughs> during the program. Spicy meatball. The spicy meatball. The spicy yeah. meatball. Uh, I, I saw your, your notice on there. SOTs can uh, submit videos uh, if they want to. I am at SOT, actually. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> I assume anyone who sends me pictures of NFA stuff that they're SOTs and I just don't ask. And the people who are like, can you send that to me directly? I'm like, oh, then I have to ask. So yeah. if you're going to ask me, yeah. send me your shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't seen, I'm going to have to send you my stuff because uh, that looks very interesting. Yeah. It's so I have very limited experience with it. I only have, uh, I think, four SOTs that have given me feedback on it. And for most of them, as long as the the lever works, uh, basically as long as you don't destroy the the lever with use or ma- material choice, that runs. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm interested to check that out. I've got um, I've got an issue. I mean, cr- crossing over to to different topics. Um, I've got a ghost gunner made uh, registered lower that. Um, well, it's a, it's a post sample and, mm-hmm. uh, 
it hogged out the the extra pinholes so that the disconnector doesn't work like it should. And that uh, spicy meatball might be a solution to make that operable without destroying and making a new lower. Yeah, actually. <laughs> so yeah, we I, I'm I'll, I need to shoot those files to you so, so I can get files from you and we can make that happen. Are you, we'll are you, are you saying you, you hogged out the uh, Odyssey or pinhole through use or? I do, it was cut, uh, okay. oblong, okay, okay, okay. and it okay. and you can actually see it moving right. a little bit, and it's like oh, it's just, it's just <laughs> terrible big enough. Like I have literally thought, you know, I'm just going to put some JB weld in there, and you know, it'll harden up and it'll hold it back, and everything will be fine. But that seemed mm. a little janky. You, know? you went yeah. Colt size pin when you should have went modern size pin. <laughs> well. Potentially, but it, uh, yeah, it, it definitely was not a, a concentric hole. It was, it was a little <laughs> egg shaped. So I don't think that's what it was supposed to do, but right. <laughs> yeah, that is actually the reason that we sent that, that ghost gunner two back and are still waiting on the replacement <laughs> to show oh, up. No. I got to talk to these guys, get that sorted out so we can finish that project up yeah. as well. But anyhow, um, <clears throat> Yeah, any any uh, think think about any parting words that that you want to talk about. We'll give you time to do your little promo and talk about everything you want to direct people towards. And uh and I'll say thanks to everyone on the panel. TJ, thank you for speaking up. We You're welcome. appreciate That's what I'm here for Komar as well. Um Komar rarely says much of anything, but when he does, you sit back and go, "Oh wow, that was cool." <laughs> yeah. you know, thanks. So so we we appreciate you being here. Uh, Fly and Rich stopping by again doesn't happen very often. We do appreciate when you uh, when you come by and don't crash in the middle of the program. That's good. Mm-hmm. Always, <laughs> I know it's a little out of character for you, but uh, but we do appreciate that. So, um, Ethan, what would you like to to tell us as we as we say so long to folks here? Thanks for the support. Thanks for having me on. Um, if anyone is looking to get into three D printing, don't hesitate to reach out. I answer almost every message and comment. So. Uh, even if it's not firearm related, I love engaging with community. The community is what makes it possible for me to do this in the first place. So, um, and the most important message is I'm just a dude. Like you guys can be doing this too. Like I'm just a fucking guy who likes to do video and games and all that kind of stuff. I'm the typical dad and husband. So if you're like, oh, that stuff's kind of cool and you're curious about it. You too can design your own firearms or print your own firearms if you don't want to design them, but like you can put your mind to it and do it. It's blurry, but that's an M72A7 law rocket launcher that we have files to shoot (laughs) rockets out of. Like it's legal and that's fucking cool. So if you're curious about it and you're just, if you have at least 15 IQ points in that stat, you can do it. You can do it. Gotcha. That's cool. You haven't talked about um, you. You have come on our live show and podcast. Y- you do that yourself, right? Do you want to? Do you want to put a plug in for that? Yes. So if you want to reach out um, and contact, so just contacting me directly. That's going to be Instagram, maybe Facebook. I'm a little less active on there, and information on the website. Or you can also reach out um, and watch us live most Saturdays uh, out of battery live. So I'm usually a co-host on there. There's a number of us, so sometimes we take turns. But um, January 6th, we will be back for Insurrection Day. We'll have no pull on. And uh, you guys can come by and uh, we talk mostly about firearm related stuff and uh, in the DIY space. Uh, we, after Nopal, are probably going to have a very uh, sought after and new up and coming guy. Um, I don't want to give out his name yet, but uh, he's not gun cad, but he's DIY and it's it's some really cool stuff. Um, and actually on that, here might be a hint here, but one of the cool things about the gun cad space is there's a lot of diversity. Like the normal gun space seems, look at our panel tonight, awfully white. Like, yeah. <laughs> but gun cad. Although it's still awfully white, there's a lot more diversity for uh, pl- politics and um, everything else. Our guest after that, he's black. Like, we actually have public facing black people that aren't Colin Noir. Like, that's sick. <laughs> like, nice. 
All right, so we'll definitely uh, put that on the list to keep track of and uh, and check out what you guys are doing over there. So um, with that, I think uh, we're going to call this a wrap. And one last thanks to everyone for being here. And, and just here's something that we do. You can participate or not. Completely up to you. I give everyone the choice after after our sponsor, Maxim Defense. Um, no, not that, not that, not that. What? <laughs> You missed it. I was going to flash, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we say that for after the show. That, yeah. So we're in the green room. We can talk. We can, you know, I mean, we don't want to make it weird while we're live. Uh, uh, weirder. Weirder. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyhow, what we do, I'm going to say until next time, and then we'll all point at the camera, like right up at the camera and say, we'll see you at the range. You participate or not at your own discretion. Okay. I learned the hard way when our sponsor was like, I'm not doing that. I was like, okay, <laughs> relax. You don't have to. Okay. So uh, until next time, we'll see you at the range. Can't